Hello and welcome back to the shop. It's Paul from Bighorn Woodworks. I am here with a, the second video in a series that I am doing. The first video I just published uh, and I got the second box the other day and I am getting ready to open part two from the Millennium Falcon build. Take a look at what is inside. Okay, so this, wow, this is interesting. Uh, okay, so this is a, another issue. These are smaller than the first issues, um, but there's stuff not in these plastic packagings as well. Um, another one, some smaller part, or a smaller package with parts. Issue three, there you go, issue four. There you go, a couple of frame parts in there. Issue 5. This is for well, issue 5. Right. Issue 6. Alright, so it looks like issue 6. I'm looking at some of the parts that are in issue 3 right now. And it looks like more cockpit parts. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to... Oh my goodness, that is so cool. Um, one of the things that I was uh, looking at uh, in, the, in the welcome kit is that there are instructions on the along the way to do some further customization to the parts like all of these parts come with some nice weathering to them but then there are parts that aren't painted that are not uh, at all weathered or custom you know uh, modified so like for instance the seats don't show any kind of wear and tear on them whatsoever so if you wanted to add wear and tear that's something that you could do and of Supposedly, in these books, it's going to tell you that for advanced modelers, which I am not, uh, for advanced modelers, you'll be able to do some uh, further modifications or further um, enhancements in order to make these more lifelike, more movie accurate. That's a future me problem. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and read through the book, and I'm going to make sure that I know what I'm doing. And then I will come back and we'll start putting together issue number three. Okay, so the first kit that we're going to work with is finishing off the cockpit area. So I got the parts from the previous kit or previous issue to do the cockpit. In here I have the rear entry door. So that would be the sticker there that goes into this doorway some rear seats some front seats um, and then the yokes and a couple of other levers um, and I was reading this I want to share this I thought this was absolutely fascinating so um, the person who was responsible for set decoration on uh, episode 4 A New Hope Roger Christian won an Academy Award for his set decoration. Um, the seats, the front seats, these little boppers right here, these were out of a Porsche Carrera, uh, Porsche 911 Carrera. And these little seats, these little jobbers here, are sourced from a reworked Martin Bacon, Martin Baker mk4 ejection seat first measure that i have to do is to take the sticker off of this little jobber and fit this into this door with that in there This then fits, snugly presses in place, friction fit in there. Okay. There you go. These are simply just press and fit into the, into the mounting points, so... Be 
careful about how I press them onto there. I don't know if they'll be able to see this or not, but they, they don't have a left right on them, but they are numbered on the back as one and two. Um, I'm putting them, them together in the fashion that I'm looking at them head on through the cockpit. Again, I don't know that it matters. Let's grab seats. Um, both seats are marked number one. seats in there. I'm going to try and show those what they are. Those are the little parts that are there. Okay. These might get glued in later. It's not exactly a friction fit. I mean, they're sliding around in there pretty well, but they just fit in. There's two two little holes that they fit into. And uh, you can see they kind of freely just move around. And grab the yokes. These there are two of these. They are identical. Mm. There you go. Faces the pilot. And then I can put this part back on. Refit the back. Onto there. And I have a completed cockpit. That thing is gorgeous. Look at that. It's beautiful. Love it. Super exciting. I love that. And they gave me a bonus part. So this is another piece of the hull. Um, it does tell me, where is it at? All right. The second piece of hull plating fits together with the first you received. You'll be receiving, you'll be assembling this together with metal frames that support it in a later issue. Kind of hoping it's like the next issue. So package four starts with another piece for the cockpit. This little plastic piece fits onto the front. Uh, this is the frame parts that I put together in the previous video. And included in the next steps are going to be some more frame parts. It looks like this one goes right here. And... This one's going to go right there. And then I have two different types of screws in this package. Except for the plastic piece. There's two different types of screws. These screws are the black ones, and they are to put the frames together. And then there's some silver screws, and those screws are for putting these hull pieces on. Now, the instructions do say that I get to put on one of them. I can test fit the second one, but that one doesn't go on yet.
think um, tip number one that I'm going to work on here is that when you're putting these pieces together, you need to make sure that they line up really super flush with each other before trying to screw them together. Okay, that's better. There is just the smallest little separation in between the plate and the part. And so it was starting to thread into the part, but it was threading with it being separated, um, which meant it was never going to pull completely flush. And that's why I say make sure that your parts are completely together before attempting to put the screws in place. Another four hole connector and put it on this side. Grab the other hole piece or uh, frame and frame the screw. <clears throat> now I have one more four hole connector, and that four hole connector is going to go at the uppermost point here. Put those together. Anyway, and carefully reading the instructions, it does tell me that they provide an extra screw. So, helpful. Alright, now I can tighten all these. And by tighten, this is not a torque wrench. <laughs> this is getting them snug until they stop and are fully seated. You do not want to over tighten these. The metal that they're made out of, uh, the screws are much harder than the frame parts and you will strip them so okay I get to attach the hull piece now so now that that piece is there oh yes I can see I would have never been able to um, attach this piece Uh, or I wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to attach these two other pieces if I would have somehow managed to attach that. Which, of course, they didn't give me the screws until this kit, so it really didn't matter. But... Okay. I have eight screws. Oh, and these are magnetic too, so... Okay, <clears throat> that is assembled and I get to take this piece and test fit it. Test fit it. Careful. That is what it looks like. That's it for kit four. Moving on to 
to kit five. Issue five. Uh, we revisit the cockpit again. So we have two parts of the uh, cockpit assembly. The hull exterior. We have two pieces that are on either side of the seats. A screw, a couple of them. And excitingly, the first bit of electronic kit that's come in the package. This, uh, this will sit behind the cockpit wall and light up the instrument panel behind. Um, battery box and the leads for testing these will come in issue 9, which should be like the next shipment. And it looks to be the exact same screw as the spare one that I received from the previous kit. So. That's what we're doing. And now for this, we have two parts, one for left, one for right. They are identified as such. Um, and this is the first time in the catalog that I have seen we will provide information for modelers who want to enhance the appearance of these panels by picking out some of the details in color um, for right now I'm just going to slot them in here There's the pieces for the sides and like I said there there is something about finishing off different colors so I will probably end up doing something like that and this is where we get to snap these two together this is a uh, do not screw do not glue this is the lower half there's a little black mark on the bottom and that little thing slides in there it doesn't snap it just slots into it and and I can tell on the back it's going to be really hard for me to show. I can tell on the back that there is in here a little area, spot, where when this is rotated just right, that kind of slots right into that spot. Hmm. So that's what it looks like from the back. That is what it looks like from the front. Issue five. Next up, issue six. Okay, I'm ready with part six. Uh, part six uh, says that it finishes off the cockpit. So, um, but it does detail that there is a going. There are a lot of opportunities for adding more additional detail through paint and stuff like that. Not necessary, but I think I'm gonna try at least some of it. So, um, for instance, these are the handles that go into the cockpit, the levers that are moved back and forth. Right now, they're just a, a silverish plastic. 
I know from watching the movies that there's at least, I think, yellow rings uh, around certain areas. So I'm definitely going to want to get out some very tiny paintbrushes and at least try and do stuff like that. Uh, give them a little bit more of an authentic look. Uh, so first parts are the cockpit surround. So or the shell for the cockpit. Go ahead and bring those together. Looks like it fits like that. Oh, I hope that okay, that fits that way. This piece might need to glue in later. The cockpit shell will not be permanently glued together. Although I have to imagine that like these pieces will be glued together. It's just that this won't be glued onto this part, right? That's probably what it means when it's when it, when it says it won't be glued together. So that'll fit in here. like this. The next part is going to be some more instrument panels. So I've got a little black part here and I've got two other little black parts that are wings. Um, kind of fit kind of goofy. Alright, so I see the final product. Basically I have two sets of stickers that line up into here and once you start working the sticker in this little wing gets stuck to the side of that other wing um, part of the sticker will overhang that's how you line it up um, I'm imagining like once it's all put in and put together, it kind of holds itself in place, but we'll see. I'm just following the instructions. All right. And then this gets just duck to that and then do the same with the other side okay so that would be the interior ring instrument panel fairly certain that that fits on that like that Oh, and that's probably why they have to be kind of flexible. Maybe. And we need this. And I need to cut these little silver things out of this. And I'm going to use this. It's a really tiny part. The holes aren't quite perfect, so I had this little thing here that I'm just reaming them out just a little bit. Now I just want to get them fit. And I don't want to lose them, no matter what, because 
they're plastic and they're tiny and I don't know if I could make my own maybe How about I don't want to have to find out if I can make my own Okay, that's, and again, I'm going to paint those, um, I want them to be a little more authentic, they look fantastic, they really do, I mean, and from a distance, no one is going to see them, but I don't want it to be from a distance, I want it to be what I know it looks like. Okay, so um, I know this is pretty instant for everyone there, but it took me about 20 more minutes <laughs> to finally get that ring. Um, it's a really, really snug fit. It goes on there. It fits, but it was very, very tight. But, and like I said, this is going to have to get glued down that doesn't stay in very well those pieces separate but yeah those cone comes off and there's the interior cockpit and there's some work I need to do on there on the inside that's uh, that's fine that's all part of the fun right it's it's getting it to look as authentic as possible um, but I, I also think that like it's got to give you the experience that you're looking for, right? Um, I've heard Adam Savage say that a lot. It's about the experience, about what you want to get out of it. Um, you know, and for some people that is absolute pure authentic, real, as as real gets to what already exists. Um, for some, it is just being able to do it. Um, I think I fit somewhere in the middle. Uh, like, I want it to look kind of real, um, but at the same time, I'm not going to be overly upset if I don't get everything 100% perfectly accurate. That's That, to me... Is, is chasing a dream for which I'm not getting paid. So, um, the reward for me is being able to do it and have fun. Uh, along with this, uh, other parts, uh, this is an interior part. This goes to the uh, hollow table. That's the, the out of surround for the seating cushion. And these are uh, greeblies. So, uh, in the book, they're called the plantons. Uh, they, they're known as Greeblies. They're just stuff that um, when the uh, Lucas folks were first developing all these different ships, they needed to stick on stuff uh, um, just to make it look cooler, I guess. And uh, uh, the name Greeblies was born. Uh, along with kit bashing, which was basically taking parts from model companies that were local in the area and buying in bulk parts that uh, weren't usable, they were just going to be recycled or trashed or who knows what they're going to do them. Uh, was, but they would go buy these little things and they would cut little parts off and stick them on. And that's, uh, so the Greeblies were born from kit bashing, I guess. So, 
Um, anyway, that is it for part six, um, which is also then it for this entire box. So, what have I got out of this whole deal? All right, so I'm six issues in. Six issues in gets me a couple of very nice frame pieces. Uh, this is really heavy duty. Like when this is done, this thing's gonna weigh a lot. These metal parts are very heavy. Um, so take that part though. Um, so there's that. And then I have a, oops, <laughs> completely available, if not assembled, cockpit. So um, I don't, aside from needing to do some finishing work and getting some stuff that's glued into place so that it, um, it doesn't come apart on me like that, um, I'll also need to be able to get in here and um, plug in the electronics so I get the backlit on there. Um, and then the seat for the hollow gaming table. That is what I have. Uh, as far as the first six kits go, I would say from a uh, from a user perspective, uh, the enjoyment that I'm getting out of this, A number one. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm, I'm having a great time. I am genuinely shocked that by the end of second box, basically, I've got the entire front assembly of the cockpit done. That was, uh, that was unexpected. I, I was thinking that it would take parts and kits and you know eventually I'd end up getting to that point uh, kind of cool that you know my my work on assembly and getting that much done uh, that shows something right it shows that I've got a part um, and I know it, it, it's not there's a lot more to this I know there's a lot more to this and I and, and but I'm but I'm happy because I actually have something to show for it and that and that is that's an accomplishment that's a good feeling you know, a lot of people know that I'm doing this. A lot of, of my friends know that I'm doing this, and they're curious about the progr progress as well. And I'm uh, very happy to say that the progress on this is satisfying. So, all right. Well, uh, again, thank you. That is the end of episode two for the Millennium Falcon build up project. Uh, when I get the third box, we'll go ahead and put another episode together. Until then, take care and watch for other videos. I know I've got some stuff ready to talk about the cabinets that I've built in the back, so uh, I'll be putting those out soon. Thank you very much for watching Bighorn Woodworks. My name is Paul, and I will see you later.